£1,049. That's £1,049. They couldn't even just make it a straight up grand, could they? All nice and neat and tidy. Nope. The Apple iPhone 11 Pro costs you £1,049 if you want it SIM free or from £72 a month on contract from Vodafone. Sorry, Grand. Looks like the kidneys won't cut it this time. We're going to have to rip out a few more bits to afford that upgrade. Now, it's been roughly half a year since Apple revealed its latest super pricey batch of smartphones. And while there's plenty to like about these flagship handsets, the Pro is still more difficult to recommend than a chili sauce enema. Not just because of that insane price, but also because of increasingly strong competition from rival brands. And half a year on that is all the more clear, as significantly cheaper Android handsets are launching with more advanced technology on board. So here's my full six month review of the Apple iPhone 11 Pro and how it's not quite as pro as that name would suggest. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, every time I come back to the iPhone 11 Pro from another device, two things immediately strike me. First of all, it is a really compact handset. You might get these pretty fat, chunky bezels running around the entire border, but the iPhone 11 Pro is still much easier to handle with just the one mic compared with a lot of Android handsets. And that's probably just as well because there's no dedicated one-handed mode on there. And second, it really isn't that great looking a phone. The only real change for this generation is that big, fat, cartoonish camera chassis, which sticks out for all the wrong reasons, even if it doesn't actually literally stick out from the surface more than a millimeter or so. It's kind of like as if I tried to improve my looks by slapping on a big fat bucket hat. It's definitely a fresh characteristic, but it certainly isn't a good one. And besides that, I would still be stuck to the same tired old boring haggard face as usual. The good news is that the iPhone 11 Pro's matte backing doesn't pick up grease marks like many other smartphones, and it's also rugged enough to still look pristine after a fair bit of abuse, as is that stainless steel engine. Although as usual, that screen is more scratched up than your cat's favorite tree. So remember kids, slap on that protection. It's definitely worth it. Still, thanks to the IP68 water and dust resistance, you can message your besties in the bath or snap a selfie in the shower. And meanwhile, that super retina display is definitely one of the best bits of the iPhone 11 Pro. Pretty typical for any iPhone, really. That 5.8 inch OLED panel is bright enough to comfortably use wherever you roam and certainly boast impressive contrast as promised. Apple is still one of the only mobile manufacturers to offer Dolby Vision support on its phones, so you can expect super crisp whites and deep, deep blacks, while the shot resolution definitely means that every frame is chock full of fine detail. Sure, you don't get that same super smooth 90 or 120 hertz refresh rate that you do get on many premium Androids these days, but it's only really noticeable when you're jumping from one phone to the other. The bigger issue here is definitely that ridiculously fat mustache notch, which properly intrudes on any full view video on the likes of Netflix, and it also means there's no room for proper notification icons. Bugger. On the flip side, at least that screen is pretty much perfectly flat as well, which makes it better suited to gaming on the go with likes of PUBG Mobile, as none of those virtual controls are slipping off the edges or anything. Sadly, there is still no built-in fingerprint sensor action on the iPhone 11 Pro, so you're stuck with face unlock alone. Although thankfully, it is one of the best examples out there, so you'll only have to resort to pin action when it's really dark, for instance. And the audio experience also gets a big fat 10 out of 10 as well, despite the fact that there's no 35 mil headphone jack, which to be fair is pretty standard amongst premium handsets now apart from the fresh new Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. This stereo speaker setup produces impressive spatial audio with Dolby Atmos support, although I would still recommend hooking up some phones for the best possible experience. And it's bad news on the storage front though, as Apple once again serves up a miserly 64 gigs of storage on this base model, despite the fact it costs over a grand. If you want a reasonable amount of storage, you'll have to spung up even more cash. And no, of course there is no micro SD memory card support in order to expand that space. So let's move on to the software. And of course, iOS isn't everyone's cup of tea, just like Android isn't either. And while I personally prefer Google's mobile OS, which is open source and offers much stronger customization options, I can see why people would like to stick with Apple's iOS instead. It's big on privacy, and you'll find a lot of the better Android 10 features stuffed on there, including, of course, some sexy dark mode action in this latest incarnation. And it's constantly being updated to deal with bugs and security threats and things like that. Although I am still unfortunately constantly experiencing what could be politely described as little quirks here on the iPhone 11 Pro, the kind of stuff that you would not expect from a premium handset. Do you remember all that bollocks about it just works? Well, every time I actually come back to an iPhone and start using it, that particular mantra always goes down like a concrete turd 
bird wrapped in barbed wire. Because quite occasionally it just doesn't fucking work at all for no clear reason. Even though Apple developed both the software and the hardware and iOS 13 ain't exactly super new so you'd kind of hope that most of these issues would have been ironed out by now. Wi-Fi issues still rear their ugly heads and the iPhone 11 Pro loves just occasionally dropping your Bluetooth connection as well to really keep you on your toes. Still brush aside these frequent bouts of shithousery and the iPhone 11 Pro is one hell of a beefy morpho. Apple's A13 platform can deal with anything at all that you throw at it, no sweat, and I would be really surprised to see it flagging even two or three years down the line. And of course another omission here on the iPhone 11 Pro is any kind of 5G connectivity. And that's not going to be a big issue at all in 2020 as that tech is still rolling out across the country. But bear in mind if you're looking for a smartphone to do you for two or three years, it's really going to impact the future proofness. And of course there are Androids half the price of this thing right now which are launching with 5G support enabled. I definitely have zero complaints on the battery life front though. Even with plenty of screen time action, I regularly finish a day with around 30% charge remaining, a much better effort compared with previous iPhones. And you actually get a quick charge adapter bundled in the box at long last as well. Huzzah! And of course that wireless charging support works a dream too. So last up, let's take a look at that slightly fugly new triple lens camera arrangement, which comprises of a 12 megapixel primary shooter, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and a 12 megapixel telephoto effort, just like Sony's Xperia 1 handsets. Photo results in daylight are really good. You can expect natural color reproduction and incredibly crisp detail shining through on every snap. Shots of people and animals in particular are at times stunning, with a very capable portrait mode also on board. Move indoors though and the results are a bit more variable. You will occasionally experience color saturation, noise and other little issues which you don't get in the likes of Huawei's handsets. And the only real difference between the standard iPhone 11 and this Pro edition is that third telephoto lens. Everything else basically remains the same. So is it worth upgrading to the Pro for this? Well you certainly get some good looking shots from far away even with a bit of a wobbly hand. The iPhone 11 Pro is a clear match for most of the smartphones in this area, although the likes of the Huawei P30 Pro, the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom and Samsung's S20 Ultra offer a stronger optical zoom overall. And Apple may have taken its sweet ass time but the iPhone 11 family finally introduced a proper night mode of sorts as well. And I say of sorts because you don't actually get proper manual control over it all, it just kind of activates itself when it feels like it which definitely isn't a system I prefer. For instance take a photo like this. Most flagships would allow you to brighten this scene up significantly but even with the slight duration adjustment this is the best I could manage on the iPhone 11 Pro with those limited controls without resorting to the brightness slider which frankly would just oversaturate everything. And in other circumstances you'll find the night mode blows out those lighter elements, again something that most other devs avoid these days after various iterations. And besides all that, what other revolutionary new camera feature do we get here on the iPhone 11 Pro? Well, the cutting edge slow motion selfie of course. Hey, woo! Yep, sure, super stuff Apple, but to be fair, the video chops on this thing are as strong as usual. You can get great looking 4K footage at up to 60 frames per second with smooth, satisfying results. It really is up there with the very, very best Android smartphones as far as the video chops go. And yeah, Samsung may have put it slightly to shame with its new 8K mode on its Galaxy S20 smartphones, but frankly, who's got an 8K TV anyway? And yes, the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chipset may allow us to shoot absolutely gorgeous Dolby Vision masterpieces when we're capturing our whole movies as well. But if you just want to shoot your cat, your kid, whatever, just doing their thing, this does a bloody good job of it. Anyway, I've done a full review of the original iPhone 11's camera tech, so go check that out for an idea of what to expect on everything apart from obviously the telephoto stuff. So there you have it. If you decide to drop over a grand on the iPhone 11 Pro, then that is the straight up honest experience that you can expect to have. Despite those quirks, it is still a good phone for sure, but at this price I would really expect cutting edge technology and unfortunately many considerably cheaper Androids have beat it in a lot of key areas. So if you've got an iPhone 11 Pro, it'd be great to hear of your own thoughts and experiences. Please leave a little mini review in the comments down below. And if you're a butthurt Apple fanboy, don't forget to smash that dislike button and call me a Google sucking boy in the comments as well. Cheers everyone, love you!